Hi, I'm Katie Johnson, and welcome back to another video in a series of stepped up layouts. If you follow my videos, you know that I keep this little layout book, and each time I do one of the entries in this, we do a simple version, and then we see what we can do to kind of layer it up. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. In the process, I'll also talk to you about the specific product that I'm using, but I'll also give you some guidance on the general type of product that I'm using so you can use perhaps something that you already have to recreate what you're going to see made in this video. When I make the pages for my layout book, I generally use copy paper, colored copy paper that you can get at Walmart or any kind of um, office supply store. And each of the layouts is going to be a quarter sheet of paper because that's the standard size card. So if you're working in inches, this piece of paper is five and a half by four and a quarter. If you're working in metric, you know what your size is for a quarter sheet of paper. All right, I've got some papers down here. And when we step up a layout, one of the ways to step it up is to just add layers. So here's a very simple way to add a layer. Just take something that, again, in inches, we go a normally we would go a quarter inch down in size. So this is what it would look like if I were going to use that as a very simple layout. An alternate would be to put something in the middle to contain your focal point and be a um, frame for it, and then go ahead and add on whatever you were going to mount your focal point on. So that's another thing that you could do. Today, we're gonna step things up and combine all of these. And by the way, I do have an option if you want at the end, I'll give you the link to it. Um, but you can have me send you a PDF that's got all these sizes for what we're going to end up creating. So the simple thing would be your quarter sheet of paper and go down a little bit layer and make that frame for it. And then come in and add another frame that's going to hold your focal point with um, the piece that is going to become your focal point. So that's the basics of what we're going to do. And let me pop these things together for my layout book. I just would generally use either like a little bit of tape on the back. Um, or maybe I would use a glue dot or something on the back. Get this on here, you can see that I just use copy paper, just regular copy paper. All right, so here's the page ready to go in my layout book. And I'm just going to snug this in right here. But I am going to keep all of these because I'm going to show you something else with them. So the big yellow sheet was, for our, so my big yellow sheet was a quarter sheet. The white one was a quarter inch smaller, four to five and a quarter by four. The white sheet that's going to hold my focal point, you can see the size on it. The pink sheet that's up there is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I have another size written down here, four and a quarter by eight and a half. So I'm going to leave this in here and I will show you why when I get ready to make my project. So I'm going to do things a little bit differently today because there are two ways that you can step up a card. And one of them is to add lots of layers, which we're definitely gonna do today. But the other is to turn it into a fancy fold. What a person would do would be to cut across and have an eight and a half by five and a half inch section. Instead, you can see I have four and a quarter by eight and a half. That's going to become my card base. The one on the right is three and a half. We're gonna use that to stamp our focal point. And the one in the middle is three and a quarter by eight and a half, and that is also going to become part of our card base. We're going to fold it in half. The card we're going to end up with is going to be a joy fold card. Okay, so normally a card base is going to be this five and a half inch dimension, which is where I'm going to score on here. And then what we're going to end up with because of this score line, right? My regular card base is five and a half because that's half of 11 inches and now I'm going to stop talking metric so if you're metric and watching this you're going to have to figure out the rest of the dimensions on your own I'm going to bring in my bone folder just to make it nice and crisp for conversation here so but this fun little thing that's kind of like a half cut card in the front now on this layered piece up here the pink piece is four and a quarter by three and a quarter and I cut this at three and a quarter. So this is my eight and a half. If I fold this in half, look what we're gonna end up with. Let me crisp this. I could mount it on the front. I mean, I could have just cut it to that dimension, um, this four and a quarter by three and a quarter. I could have just cut that to that dimension and glued it on the front and open it up and that would be a nice card. But we're actually going to turn this into a joy fold. And a joy fold is like 
like a hug and a hug. When you hug somebody, you wrap one arm around and you wrap the other arm around. So this is opening up a card, like one arm that's around and the other arm that's around. And again, I will give um, a link at the end if you want to have a written set of directions for this Joyful card with the dimensions that I'm using. This is the product that I'm going to use today. I'm going to use the Enduring Beauty stamp set. And we're going to use this holding you close in my heart because that's kind of what happens when you hug someone. This is actually going to be a sympathy card that I'm going to send. It's got this great big flower image right here. I love any kind of a um, stamp, stamp set that has both scripty as well as block letters. I just like it when it breaks up the, the sentiment that way a little bit because I think it helps you focus on the meaning when you see some words bigger and some words smaller. Anyway, this is the stamp set that we're using. It does come with a matching set of dies. I pulled one out. Let me get this back in here. So it's got a framelit, this great big thing right here, that's going to let you um, die cut the stamped piece. It's also got a couple of little things down here that can coordinate with these dies. But then in addition to that, it's got a bunch of just extra dies with details in them. I don't know if you can see, but it's going to cut holes in there. So it's going to make some real pretty layering pieces that you can use. You'll see those on other projects if you follow my Facebook page, which if you haven't done that, take a minute right now, go follow my Facebook page. Um, or if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, because I'll probably, if I have any videos, I'll um, upload them to YouTube. But the static pictures will be on my Facebook page. Uh, but anyway, you will see some projects coming up this week that will feature some of these dies because these are just awesome ways to add extra layers and again, still stamp your project. Now, this is the interesting thing. This particular stamp set also coordinates with a set of stencils or Stampin' Up! calls them masks. These are layering stencils. So I don't know. Let's see if I can get a couple of them here. So you can see this one is the flower centers. I should have a piece of dark card stuck behind here. Let me pull this in. So this one is the flower centers. This one is going to just uh, do the whole great big flower thing. But then if you overlay it with this stencil, it's going to get you some of the detail for the inside of the flower. Layering stencils are so much fun to play with. Oh, I also should point out while I have them in my hand, can you see the little notch up here? That is to help you to get things lined up when you're looking at these and going, oh, I don't know if I have it right or wrong. Um, the notch is going to help you line them up. One more thing. Can you see the kind of pink on here? So these stencils will stain if you use them a lot. So clearly I have used mine a lot. Um, but it's not going to impact your use of the stencil. It's only a problem if there's wet ink on there that would transfer to your project. But having the ink bleed into the stencil and just be there for the rest of its life um, is not an issue in terms of how well the stencil itself is going to work. It's just the nature of the beast that chemicals like to interact with each other. And in particular, I have found that the red dyes in particular tend to stain my stencils and they tend to stain my um, photopolymer stamps especially as well. So like I say, not a problem at all unless you've got wet ink on there. So if you see the color and you're worried about it, just take a Kleenex or a cloth or something and try and wipe it off and just make sure that it's, it's not wet ink. But if it's staining, not a problem. And back to the three pieces that I cut originally from my sheet. I had this eight and a half inch section that was four and a quarter tall that becomes my card base. I have this section that's eight and a half inches by three and a quarter inches, which is going to be the joyful part of my card. And now I have this section that's left over, this three and a half inch piece. And this one is where I'm going to stamp my image. So as we talk about Stampin' Up! product here, the black ink that is the standard ink, the one I use most of the time, is going to be this Memento ink. Make sure that your ink pad is nice and juicy. This is a photopolymer stamp. Okay, I just sped through that, but what you saw me doing was applying lots and lots and lots of ink to this thing. The fact that it's clear and see-through is makes it even easier for me to tell if I have it well inked. And of course, well inked means you regularly re-ink your ink pads. I have a uh, foam pad sitting here. Stampin' Up! sells this as a piercing pad. In fact, you can kind of see some holes in there. Um, sells it as a piercing pad, but it also works as a nice stamping mat because the photopolymer stamps, they don't have any cushion to them. And when you've got a big stamp, especially like this, you need to make sure 
let me get this angle on here. You need to make sure that you are transferring all the ink, which means you lay it on there and don't scoot it around at all. And then you push really hard and in all different areas. And the squishiness of having a foam pad underneath there is just going to help to press the edges of the stamp a little bit more deeply, make more solid contact with the paper to help with the ink transfer. Voila. And there you have your ink or your stamped image. I'm going to actually stamp this a second time. This is an alternate. This is the silicone craft mat, which again has some squishiness to it, like that foam pad that you just saw me use. So we're going to stamp the other side. This is the first one that I just did. And I'm going to go on the other side and recreate the process just so that you can see again that the silicone craft mat works as well. You just saw me use the foam pad and then you saw me use the silicone craft mat, both of them as an aid to getting good inking with a large stamp like this. And um, you could certainly just try stamping on paper as well. But if you find that you're not getting the coverage that you want, then you might want to try using one of those other tools. You could try a mouse pad too, maybe, and see if something like that would work. All right, so I have my image down here, and then the next thing we want to do is to talk about how we're going to color it. This is a beautiful image with so much detail in it. So there are a variety of different things that you could use to color this. You could try colored pencils. You could try markers. You could try a watercolor pen. You could try watercoloring on it. Now, I used memento ink which means if I was gonna use markers, I would bring out the blends because the alcohol markers work well with the memento ink. If I was gonna use our classic markers, I would not want to use memento ink. I would wanna use stays on instead because of you'd get bleeding. And likewise, if I wanted to take this image and watercolor the image, then I would also wanna be using stays on ink. However, this one has the masks. So we're gonna color this image with masks. So now let's talk about colors. With the flower image, I'm gonna use some yellow and the leaves are gonna have some green in it. And then for just some coordination with the green, I'm gonna do some accents in a lighter color green. My choice here, I'm going to use Daffodil Delight for my flowers. I'm gonna use Old Olive for the, um, the focal point flowers because it's an intense green. And then I'm gonna use Soft Sea Foam for a background color just to kind of tie things together and bring out a little bit more of that green. I'm holding a piece of light gray in my hand, Smoky Slate. This I'm going to use for my sentiment piece. So we are now ready to start playing with these stencils. Can you see that one? And then this one, what number is this one? So this one is the number three. If I turn it over to the other side, you can't see the number. It's not in, um, there's no number on this side. So in other words, it's kind of etched into the plastic. So this just lets you know that you have it right side up because, and I'll show you again what I mean, if you happen to have it upside down and you're trying to line this up, you're gonna be twisting and turning and twisting and turning and nothing's gonna work and you're gonna say what's wrong. You had it upside down, okay? So the number's gonna help with that. I'm choosing to use blending brushes. Stampin' Up! sells two sizes of blending brushes, the big ones and the little ones. And then we also sell another tool for transferring ink. We also sell these sponge daubers, super handy. They fit on the end of your finger and you can dab them in ink and then put them on your project. Okay, so let's just check this out. We're gonna get it lined up. Where's my number is right here. And I'm using my flower buds as markers. Did I get it lined up right? Oh, I did. All right, I don't want things to slip. I have two choices here. I can make sure that my hand is going to hold it. I'm right-handed, so my left hand is going to hold it. I can make sure that my hand is touching the base and the stencil, and if possible, the card. Otherwise, I'm going to hold right here in a space where no ink is going to go, but press really hard to try to hold all three of these pieces so that they don't move with respect to each other. The other alt idea that you can do is to come in with a post -a note. And if I use my post note to to touch all three things, the base, the stencil, and my cardstock that I'm applying the ink to. So cardstock, the ink goes on, stencil, and whatever my base is. And I'm still gonna use my left hand over here just to secure everything. So, and again, I'm pressing hard on this area over here that is both stencil and the cardstock, and things shouldn't move at that point. Ready to see the fun? Okay, 
Here's my blending brush, my tool. I pick up some ink and I'm just going to lightly go through the hole and then pick it up and let you see. Oh, that is so fun. That is so pretty. And of course, if you love to color with colored pencils or love to color with markers, then you like to take your time. And if you're like me and like things to go a little bit more quickly, this is quick and easy. So I'm going to cover all of these leaves with the green. And look how quick that went. I didn't even speed anything up. You just heard me talking and saw the color go on. And I'm done with this part of my project. So this comes off. So pretty, you guys. So pretty. I will have to take this into probably my bathroom sink and just rinse everything off. Or you could squirt it with a cleaner of any sort. Um, but you do want to get that ink off before you use it on anything else. Because right now, that is not stained. That is ink. Whether it dries on here or not, if it gets new wet ink on top of it, this is chemical that's going to be on the surface and will transfer to your next project. So you got to clean it. All right, here is my next stencil. And I should have paid attention to where the notch was. So now I've got to line it up again. So this one is just the detail on the leaves. So I'm kind of trying to line up the veins that I see stamped in there. But again, I'm going to use my post-it note, the base, the stencil, and the card that I'm applying the ink to. And same thing, my fingers holding the stencil and the card base, and then I'm holding it um, just to secure everything. I'm not even using another color. You could play around with colors and do some really awesome coordination. But I'm taking more of the same color that's already on there and just applying it more darkly. And guys, when you're coloring with a marker, you can do something similar, right? A lot of times we'll take our blends or our markers and we'll go over the whole image in this one color and then come back and hit certain areas to highlight and just add more of the same color to the project that already has been colored. Ready for the reveal? And again, not speed it up. You just saw me doing that in real time. Imagine how long that would take you with markers to color it. This goes so much more quickly. And look at the amazing, awesome results you get on this. And I have the two um, stencils over here that are intended for use with the flowers. I'm actually not going to use them on this project. Here is the fifth out of the five stencils. Let's see, the notch went up in that corner, right? So this is that fifth one, which is intended to come back and add some detail to the flower centers. Well, I've already stamped the black detail on the flower centers. I'm just going to overlay this here. And again, I'm visually lining things up kind of trying to line it up with the flower centers, but it's not a perfect match in terms of where the um, coloring is going to go with where the stamping is, because that really wasn't the intention. This is more intended if you were just going to use stencils alone without the stamp set, which again is so versatile the way they have it designed, because you can make some really pretty projects without even stamping the image, just using the stencils alone. Guys, these stencils are only $12.50. So if you're putting in an order anytime soon, add $12.50 just for the masks or spend for the whole bundle and get the dyes and the masks and everything. But um, I'm going to just add this on here and do some yellow highlighting around where the black is already stamped. And because it's not a perfect match, because it's not intended to be a replacement for the stamped stamens in the middle, I'm going to get extra yellow color in there for what is the flower center. And that is a really pretty image here. So it just really adds the yellow to highlight where the black already is. All right, this is what I'm going to use on today's project. So I brought in the rest of the card parts here. And here's the flower that you just saw me color. I am going to die cut this. But before I die cut it, let's just talk about the parts and how they go together. Because I said that we were going to make a joy fold. And you saw me cut those parts. And then I also said I was going to use this soft sea foam. It's just a way to help set the parts off from each other to do some of the framing. So I'm going to... On this project, I'm going to use my liquid glue for most of it, but then when I get that flower die cut, we're going to raise some parts up. All right, this piece is going to just be my framing layer, like you saw on the sample that I started with. I brought out this layout book again, just for a little bit of reference of this joy fold. You've got the left hand side, the left flap, and then you've got the part I'm putting the adhesive on right now, the back side of the right side of the fold. And you want to make sure that it's centered. So I folded the flap back 
and now I'm getting it um, centered on the, what's going to be basically the inside of the card. And there you have your two flaps that are going to flap over each other. Got lots of space on the inside where you can do some writing. And then we want to decorate the front so that extra seafoam piece is going to get adhered to the front of that right hand flap of the joy fold. So now that I have that on there, this is the basics of my card and now it's ready for the flower. So the next steps are to get this flower ready to mount onto the card base. You saw me stamp it, you saw me color it with the masks, and the next thing you're gonna see is you're gonna see me die cut it with a framing, with a framelit layer. So let me go do that right now. What I neglected to show before I left is that I do use post it notes or post-it tape or something to hold my uh, framelit on there before I send it through the machine just to avoid it slipping in the machine. The other thing I didn't show you before I left is that there is this little label die in here, which has some real cute little detail with the spots in here. And I die cut that one as well for my sentiment. And remember I said this one is going to be a sympathy card. So the sentiment that I'm using says holding you close in my heart. I love the photopolymer. I love the ability to see through it as I'm stamping and make sure that my words are in fact parallel with the edge of the label. So the final steps are going to be to mount this piece on the front, leaving enough room to add my sentiment down here. Okay. I want some extra dimension in here, so I'm going to use dimensionals to raise up the flower on the front of the foot, what's going to be the focal point. Oh, look at this. I use these dimensionals all the uh, time, and I'm almost out. I want to open this flap and just check and make sure that I don't accidentally have any sticky showing out on the outside edges of this flap because then it would stick itself closed. All right, you can use your fingernail to peel them off. I like my pokey tool. I just think this is a quicker way to kind of loosen and pick up all these little ends. The pokey tool does get filled up, so then you have to empty it and come back to pick up more. Use the Take your pick tool, which I use way more than I ever thought I would when I first came out with this product. Is that, that's still there. All right, I'm ready to mount this on. There's one more thing you need to pay attention to. You need this inside flap to be able to open up all the way, which means that you don't want to have these leaves sticking so far out, they're gonna get caught in that fold when you want it to open. So let it hang out a little, but don't let it hang out a whole lot, all right? You can see I'm only going over the edge a little bit here. And then before I press anything down, I'm just going to fold it this way to make sure that my card opens up all the way. I can hear it catching just, oops, see, it cut a little bit there. So before I press anything down, I'm kind of twisting as I pull this off. I'm going to scoot it a little bit more that direction. This is a really important step. Don't overlook this thing if you're making this card or one like it. You need to make sure that anything you have hanging off of that fold right there is not going to prevent the card from opening up, okay? Then we are ready to add our sentiment. So this is gonna go right in here. It's gonna end up covering some of what you colored and that's just uh, the nature of the game. It's also gonna hang a little bit off the edge of this card, which I'm just fine with. If you wanted, you could pull it in a little bit further and cover up more. It's your choice on how you put the thing together. I'm actually gonna um, put this on with more dimensionals. So let's talk about a couple of other finishing touches on here. First, as you're thinking about using this card, you are, might be thinking about where would you write a sentiment? So you do have lots of room here and here to write a sentiment on this card. I would be careful writing a sentiment on this piece right there because this is just the thin front and you don't want something to be showing through, the writing showing through. Although you could add another piece of paper in here for extra thickness and opaqueness. The other thing to point out is I usually like to add some sort of sparkle and bling to my projects. And one way to do that is to bring in some rhinestones, which like I said, I use my dimensionals all the time. I use my rhinestones all the time as well. So you could come in and add a few rhinestones to this, which I am going to do. But then I'm going to do one more thing before we finish this off. So a rhinestone there. 
you know, put a rhinestone. I'm going to add one more. Put one right up there. So on this project, I put all three of my rhinestones around the sediment rather than trying to highlight something going on with the image up here, because there's one more thing I'm going to do to get some shine on the image itself. And that is I'm going to highlight the flower centers with this product right here. If you've seen me use this before, this is the fine tip glue pen. And yes, it is a glue. It's not a very quick drying glue, and I tend to actually not use it as a glue. But the material in here has a very high surface tension, so it stays where you put it. It doesn't run, and it dries to a beautiful crystal uh, look. I'll do this before I go on. It's wet right now. It's got an opaque look to it. So I wanted to show you that because we're going to wait a little bit of time for it to kind of dry. And so at least we know that one will have the most amount of time available to dry. Oops, something happened. It's a mistake. I'm so glad that happened because I can show you. Let me go down and do this one as well. What you want to avoid is what happened on that second flower. You want to avoid getting an air bubble in there. And that happens, but it's not like going to ruin your project. You're just going to fix it. All right, I've come back and hold this up close again. So that third flower has the glue on it. And add a little bit more up there because I didn't quite fill out the whole thing. Basically, what I'm kind of doing is coloring, but coloring with glue instead of with a marker. All right, that one has an air bubble in it, which is not good because it will look very funny if it dries that way. I'm going to lift it off. I'm taking a piece of scrap paper here, and I'm just going to come into where the glue is, pop the bubble. It's going to look terribly messy and all dented like the surface of the moon, and you're not going to like it, but you're going to come back then and just squeeze a little bit more of this fine tip glue in and fill in the space. And it'll just kind of fill in all the little divots and holes. All right, we're gonna cross our fingers on that. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it as I put the needle back in. It's got a little bit of glue on the end. That's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm actually gonna squeeze it just a little bit to push any air out. And if there was any glue up there in the nozzle, it would push that glue out as well, but it's all good. And then you've got this needle end here. You can see that little needle end. And then you have to get it someplace where your eyes can focus on it and stick that needle into the very fine tip applicator and screw the whole thing shut. This thing does dry very rock hard. And so it would be a problem if you allowed the glue that was in that applicator tip to dry in that applicator tip. So hence the putting the cap on as soon as you're done, not letting it sit off to the side and, um, and dry in that position. All right, this is basically our finished card. I'm gonna again, show you what it looks like, but very carefully now, cause this stuff isn't dry. It's not gonna run, but I don't wanna like open it up and mess having it touch something. So you're again, being careful that whatever edge you go over this fold is not too far over that it's gonna crunch the end of your image and bend it when you open it. And then you've got this joy fold where you've got one little card mounted on the surface of a bigger card and they fold over each other. And so that's the joy fold. If you like this project, if you thought this was a good way to see how a project is done and hear all the little tips and tricks and important things to remember while you're constructing, take a minute now to subscribe on YouTube and make sure that you turn ring the bell. I guess that's what they call it, ring the bell. So you get notifications when I post future videos like this. They'll be posted every Monday at one o'clock. And if you like the product that you saw me use, I'll make sure that there are also links to the product. This one was Enduring Beauty. It has a matching set of dies and a matching set of stencils. Notice I said matching and not bundled because this product is actually a carryover from a previous catalog. First time a catalog product appears with matching parts like that, it will be bundled for 10% savings. If it carries over, the bundle pricing advantage is gone. So when you see a bundle you like and it's new, get it right away. I said there are three current opportunities to get those layering stencils. So there's this one here, and there are two others as well that are bundled because they are new product. And again, I'll make sure you have links to all three of those. And if you want the PDF for the Joyfold instructions, I'll leave a um, link where you can just click and I'll send it to you by email. Hey, thanks for watching and have an incredible week and we will see you next Monday. I'm Katie Johnson. Bye for now.